Hello, it gives me great pleasure to talk to you from King's College London, the home of King's Forensics. I'm really excited to talk to you about the facilities that we have here and our research themes. We're very fortunate to have key academics in various different fields helping to develop national and international policy, which then has an impact on those involved in forensic science research wider afield. King's Forensics is an academic grouping within King's College London here in the centre of uh, London on the Waterloo campus. Our aim is really to pull together innovative research, collaboration with partners and to do impactful work. We benefit from three ISO accredited laboratories, including the Drug Control Centre, which is the only WADA accredited laboratory in the UK. We collaborate with a number of different partners, including the Metropolitan Police, other universities and forensic providers within the UK and beyond. Our aim is to answer important forensic questions and to undertake rigorous, forward-thinking research. Illegal wildlife trade probably comes to something like $17 billion per annum across the globe. King's Forensics got involved with this because of a seizure of ivory. That ended up with having a paper in a very well-known journal. That original piece of research developed the, the best method for getting finger marks from ivory over a period of time. So we're starting there because it's easily adaptable and it's quite simple to teach. So we're also looking at the development of new powders and better ways of detecting these things. Infrared, ultraviolet, all sorts of things. We went out to Zimbabwe. In that first year, they had 18 convictions based on forensic evidence. We have been now invited to Malawi, which proves what the benefit it is that we started off this collaboration at King's. With uh, rape and serious sexual assault cases, the rate at which they're charged is very, very low. It's less than 5% for rape cases in particular. We want to make sure that digital forensic science and physical forensic science and medical forensic science are not treated completely individually. We break down those silos, we start working together. Traces only persist for a certain length of time, but what we want to do is push the boundary and see how long can we get those traces to persist and then how effectively can we collect them, how can we interpret the evidence that we get holistically in the context of the case and make sure we have a really robust set of scientific evidence to go before a court. DNA was discovered here at King's and we're very proud of that. I've been working in forensic genetics for more than 30 years. One of the areas that we're interested in is age identification and we do that by looking at tiny molecules that sit on the DNA. Looking at the ratio of those different molecules, we can get an inference about how old somebody is. Canine DNA is something that we've gained significant expertise in recently. We have a large database of the very most common dogs in the UK. Dogs are sometimes perpetrators of crimes, but also they may leave hairs at a crime scene. They may be completely innocent bystanders. My research group focuses on the analysis of chemical traces with a specific emphasis on explosive residues. In my group, we have therefore interest in how these residues are formed, how the composition varies amongst different sources, how they are transferred and how they persist. This with the final aim to find chemical features that are potentially characteristic of a specific source or a specific activity. One of our recent achievements is the development of a novel approach based on artificial intelligence to reverse model the explosion mechanism, and this has been proved to be helpful for the profiling of gunshot residues. One of the ongoing projects in my group is the evaluation of portable instruments for drug testing and music festivals. We have assessed the capability of two portable GCMS instruments and the Radian ASAP mass spec for detecting and identifying drugs of abuse at several music festivals. The results are very promising as they demonstrate robust identification and quantification capabilities for a range of traditional drugs of abuse, but also for the so-called new psychoactive substances. 
our developed methods are expected to be routinely employed in the field and, in turn, to prompt and inform policymakers of the drugs currently being seen. My role here is to strengthen the anti-doping research program and also analyzing the samples we receive from the athlete. Mostly, the anti-doping research is based on the direct detection of forbidden compounds, having new methods on new matrices like dry blood spots could provide a complementary technique to detect doping in sports. The indirect forensic approach can be a potential tool, for instance, detecting doping as possession of a substance or attempted administration of a prohibited substance. The integration of anti-doping research and intelligence acquired using forensic approach can have a strong impact in the development of more effective and robust anti-doping strategies. The intersection between teaching, research and casework is key for us here at King's Forensics. Research that's at the cutting edge can be brought straight into active casework and also we can use it to teach the students. We're very lucky that we have such good collaborations with forensic institutions worldwide where we can place students for their projects. It helps with employability, it helps with it helps the laboratories to improve their techniques and it means that quite a lot of work actually that students do gets published in the end. We also have two online courses. These allow people at their own leisure to go through and look at the sort of research and work that we do and how it impacts cases uh, in real time. I did my MSc at, at King's many years ago in forensic science and I genuinely think it's the best course that there is available in the UK. With the help of people like Tracy, people from the police and people in the field, this programme is really exactly what is required. I carry out a postdoc research five years ago at King's College London and uh, King's offer a really unique environment for this kind of research. When I saw the job advertisement I just applied and here we are. Not only do we teach, we do a lot of cutting-edge research. We're also practicing forensic scientists as well. We do it all and all, each one of those informs the other. It's an honour really to work in this field, working with inspirational people, being at the forefront of science and contributing to the improvement in the community and wider field. Hello again. Thank you so much for staying with us and learning about our impactful, innovative research here at King's College London. King's Forensics is very keen on collaborative arrangements and we hope you can engage with us, particularly through our doctoral training programme. Please do check out our website and we hope you'll be in touch with us very soon. Thank you.